Hello my soccer universe! First Champions League video for the new season. Yes, I intended to make some more videos, but to be honest I never really had the time. I was on vacation and so I was thinking last week, but then I was again away from home. So I actually thought it's maybe best to just summarize in one video everything that happened in the qualification and then we'll talk about the, the draw and you probably will get tomorrow uh, you should get tomorrow a, a review of the draw as well and I will do something like that for the Europa League and the new Conference League. Probably towards Saturday or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit crazy times. A uh, lot to do. In any case, I am wearing Benfica, which is the only team that qualified for the group stage of which I, of, through the qualifiers, I mean, I, as you see, I have plenty of teams that are in Champions League, but it's the only team uh, for which I have a jersey that went through the qualification rounds. I actually had three at the end, uh, but then only Benfica made it. And to be perfectly honest, I love this shirt, but I actually was not necessarily rooting for Benfica in that one, although Benfica is one of those teams that should be in the Champions League. I will focus now on the playoff round. I just want to send before that. I mean, the only thing that I saw live before that, and you will get at the end of the video, you can uh, go through all the results uh, if you were interested. Uh, I saw actually both games of Rapid against Sparta Praha, which Oh, Prague, which is such an iconic duel that harks back to the 30s uh, that I actually was quite surprised that this happened in the Champions League quali uh, qualification. So I was a little bit hyped for it. Of course, you know I'm not that much for Rapid, but I have to say the first game, Sparta took an early lead, uh, but Rapid then uh, could equalize and get a win in the second half with a wonderful goal. Absolute wonderful goal in there. So watch those highlights, I said that before, but then Rapid got hit with so many injuries and so on that in the second uh, leg, they had no chance. Uh, lost two to nil. It was a little, a little, a little bit unlucky in in a way because he could have gotten to the overtime. But on balance, I think Sparta was the better team there. Uh, to me, the standout result of those uh, of the first round or uh, of the second round. That's the first one that I, re I really followed. Was this PSV absolutely? took apart uh, Galatasaray uh, that I did not expect and PSV early on was really 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 flying. Um, in the second round I think the big shocker then was that uh, Javenas Vesda, Red Star Belgrade, uh, got eliminated by Sheriff. Uh, that I think a uh, few expected. I, all, all, I think Malmö uh, ahead of Rangers was a little bit of a surprise result there as well. Um, and yeah, the Russians didn't really do all that well overall too. So let's go to the playoffs and I think I'm gonna go through, uh, through it with um, uh, a match by match, especially how it then went in the second in, in the second leg. Although I had another result for the first leg up. So uh, Ferenc Varos and PSC uh, Young Boys. This was probably the most exciting one because in both uh, games five goals were scored, twists and turns left and right. Um, in the first leg, I think Ferenc Varos twice held the lead, missed the penalty, um, and Young Boys, I think with a man down, even came back to win that one. In the return leg, I mean, any good defending was already out of it. Um, I think a young young took an early lead again. Ferenc Varsh turns us around at the half time. We are going to overtime and it really seemed that this might be the way it's going. But then uh, young boys um, kind of turn it up, up again, uh, score an equalizer, miss a penalty and then score late, later a third, goals and they, a third goal and they go through. And I have to say, I don't have yet a young boys uh, shirt given their friendship with Lusk. It's a little bit of a travesty and yeah, uh, that I should do. Ludo Goretz against Malmö. Um, first leg was all Malmö. There was hardly anything coming from Ludo Goretz, who then really gave it their all in the second leg. Um, however, they were always going to leak, leak a goal. And so in the end, uh, they just couldn't find the third goal that would have sent them to overtime. But I think on balance, probably Malmö deservedly got through. 
the Benfica against PSV matchup was really one. I, I, I said in the, in the intro, I was slightly more for PSV there because uh, Portugal already has two in the Champions League, so I thought that Dutch should probably also have two. I think this um, would look all right, right to me. And as I said, also PSV has been flying up until that point. Um, but PSV all lost it with you know, uh, stupid errors in defense in the first half in Lisbon, where they actually had already scored a wonderful equalizer, but it was uh, right for some odds given for offside. Um, they find themselves 2-0 down because they cannot mark. Uh, they pull one back and probably should, should, should have gotten an equalizer. Uh, but I think they were satisfied enough with that result. The problem was that in the second leg, uh, Benfica went down, I think a third is by a man, and then really did something that PSV could not handle. PSV had all the control, everything, uh, um, most of the, of, of the possession, most of the game was played in the Benfica half, but Benfica was standing there on the back with five, if not six men, once they went down uh, by a man, and uh, it was just an onslaught of PSV, but Benfica defending rather smartly, and then if you do not convert your big chance, I'm looking at you, Zahavi, who for once they could make the build build of the PSV re really prefers playing a long ball from the back and then a quick counter attack and it, the ball gets played in and Zahavi open net and hits the bar. Uh, that was one, you need to make that goal and then uh, I think PSV will probably win this one. But so Benfica, I actually thought, especially in the last 10 or 20, 20 minutes, uh, PSV tried, tried it all, but it was always, you know, going a little, little bit like a handball, but with a six in the middle, Benfica could see this out rather easily. It was, to me, a shame that this is a qualifying playoff. This was the 1988 European Cup final. Those are two giants. I actually think that both really, really would deserve to be in the championship, like just by name. Then, Brøndby against Salzburg, or Sal Salzburg, Salzburg against Brøndby. Um, you know how Salzburg usually has a tough time pull, pull, putting away qualifying matches. Um, they failed 11 times in, in a row, then they really made more work than needed against, uh, was it Haifa, Maccabi Haifa last season? And again against Brøndby, a team where they were heavily favored, especially at first leg, when Brøndby had half of the team out with COVID. Uh, they find themselves within 10, 10 minutes down. And then really had a hard time getting going. They get an equalizer and then very late, late on, they find the winner. And I think that probably clicked and the game into in their favor, turned, uh, turned in the favor because early on, I mean, it was the opposite in the return leg. Although the Brand defense gave, 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 gave it all to send death and hate to Red Bull, I would actually support them in that endeavor. Although Red Bull, as I said, I do not like the construct. I have to give credit that they have been doing really good work overall and they have now their own identity. So that uh, that they can find every, every every year a new team, really, uh, they have to give, be given a lot, a lot of credit. Just uh, if you would go back to the true colors and uh, I think it would look all differently. In any case, Salzburg very quickly got the first first goal through a wonderful goal, I think by Sesto, what was his name? The way he takes down it by the shoulder and wall, wallace it then in from there. Uh, great goal. Uh, they get quickly the second. Adeyemi misses a big one to make a third. I think that that is that, the only thing that Salzburg really has to uh, not be happy about is that they couldn't find the third. Third goal, so Brunkby pulls one back. But at that point, it was, the game was already done and dusted. The big shocker was definitely Sheriff uh, from Tiraspol, which is not even really in Moldavia, in Moldavia there, which is, you know, politics, Transnistria, look it up on Wikipedia and, and, and so on. They qualified for the first time a team from Moldova is uh, qualified for the Champions League. I said they are not even from Moldova. They completely destroyed Dinamo Zagreb in the first leg. Uh, Vertra Ray was just... No one could handle him. Um, and then in the return, like they saw it out with a nil-nil. Uh, pretty impressive. I mean, they already got rid of Javena Zvezda, who I think are stronger team than Dinamo Zagreb. Yeah, that's that's a very, very hot take, especially if you find yourself in the Balkans. But yeah, uh, Sheriff is through and we have a new team in the, champ in the Champions League and I'm go it's going to be curious. I have a feeling... They will not be the slaughtering lambs that everyone makes them out 
but let's see. I mean, uh, getting those dolls rods was already pretty big for them. And then the other heavyweight fight was between Monaco and Shakhtar Donetsk, where in the first leg, I think this is where Monaco lost it, because uh, it was an even game where Shakhtar could convert the chances and then had control of the game. Second leg, it was all Monaco. Literally, all Monaco. They get their two goals through Ben Yedda in the first half. In the second half, Ben Yedda misses a big one to make it three. They have more chances even after then. With the first shot on goal, Schachter converts. And there's a statistic that I think Alexander Nübel, since he went to Monaco, of all the shots that he faced, he has only saved one. And it proved again. He did not. He made no save in, the, in, in this game. No shot on goal was actually saved by him. Um, so they get the goal. The game goes to overtime despite Monaco really trying everything to avoid overtime. In overtime, they again, maybe not as, um, and it was very much like PSV against Benfica, uh, maybe not as dominant as they were before. However, they cannot find the goal and then uh, they lose the game. Uh, they Schachter scores and then they lose the tie thanks to a freak on goal. Uh, by Aguila, who just the ball hits him and it goes then over uh, the head, head of Nubel into it. I mean, gut wrenching. And that goal, there were even six or seven minutes to, to be played. You could see it on the faces of Monaco. This can this cannot be. And uh, I think all belief went right there and then. Uh, that's the feeling that, that, that I had. It was a really, really tough uh, watch in that sense. So with all this, we have the pots for the group stage draw. And since the champions of the top eight teams are now all in pot one, again, we will have a rather unbalanced draw. Um, I think a whole lot. I think the wild card is probably in pot four uh, for a group of death where, where we Milan go. And, you know, I'm a big Milan fan. I, uh, so this is where I'm a little bit, you know, have some treacherous interpretation because for Milan there could be a nice group like, uh, let's say, Sporting, um, Sevilla, not pick, pick, picking other teams, Zenit and Milan. Uh, that is a, a group that actually I, I would uh, think Milan could get out of. However, uh, there's also a group like, uh, let's say, Chelsea, PSG, uh, and Leipzig, which would be an absolute horror draw in many ways. So I think that Milan is kind of the wild card, which uh, was in the, I think, three years ago. So uh, I think the pots themselves are not super balanced, but it will make for an interesting draw for sure. I think there will be a few groups, uh, groups as usual in India that are, will be complete uh, sleepers, or I actually can see Manchester City getting an easy group again. Although I think it's high time that they get, get something tougher. So, uh, will be interesting. I intended initially to make kind of this matrix, say again, who can draw whom. But then um, this would be so unwieldy that I, I, I decided not to do it. So, uh, I just give you that and we will we'll discuss then the draw uh, in a video tomorrow. Uh, I have, however, based on my on the ratings and uh, so from uh, SPI, from 538, from the e club ELO rating and from the bookmaker odds, I can tell you the favorites and I have, have to say at least on the top, maybe with the exception of Bayern Munich, which I think first squad super, but if they have some in injuries, I think Bayern Munich would fall a little bit. But I actually would still say Manchester City ahead of PSG are the favorites. PSG has maybe the superstar team, but uh, the problem is I don't see them as a team quite yet. So uh, here are the uh, top 20, as I said for me, Milan 17, which means they might just not make it out of the group stage. I think if Milan would, personally now, if Milan would make it out of the group, group stage, this would be a major, major, major success, given where they are, but it all will depend on the draw. And also I did this simulation now because it will also enable us to evaluate the draw, who got hit the hardest. Uh, this is all pre-draw and then after, after draw we can actually nicely com compare and I think this will be very interesting as well. Okay, as I promised, here are all the results from the qualification rounds 2, 3 and the playoffs.
And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below if you want to add anything to the Champions League qualification rounds. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!